Today, I'm covering four common metal roofing questions in five minutes or less. First up, we have Kevin Moss. Kevin Moss asks, in a coastal environment, what coating would you recommend for a metal roof? When it comes to the metal substrate itself, what the metal actually is, you're gonna wanna use aluminum if you're within 1,500 feet of a coastline because a coated steel like galvalume or galvanized will not stand up to that saltwater environment and will rust out prematurely. The other part of my answer is the paint system. You want a PVDF paint system. It's a high quality architectural coating that will help protect your roof and it has great resistance to chalking and fading in that salt water environment especially. Next up is Aaron Carlton who says, I see a lot of exposed fastener roofs where the screws have backed their way out of the decking over the years. Do standing seam metal roofs have the same problem as well but you just can't see the screws? Why or why not? Well, screws backing out of an exposed fastener roof is due to the thermal movement and expansion and contraction of that metal. The metal is pinned to the decking with a screw, and when that moves back and forth, the screws eventually work their way out over several of those heating and cooling cycles over the years. When it comes to standing seam roofing that uses a clip like this one here, a mechanical seam panel that uses an expansion clip that allows the metal to slide back and forth without the clip base moving itself will allow those screws to remain planted within the deck and not back their way out. Similarly, with a snap lock panel that uses a fixed clip, the snap lock panel itself moves back and forth over top of the clip and the clip doesn't move at all. Also, we recommend not pinning a steel roof with panels longer than 25 feet and an aluminum roof with panels longer than 15 feet. Polo Mayer asks, what does UL90 translate to in terms of wind speed? This is a great question because UL90 is an uplift testing standard that doesn't actually correlate to an exact wind speed. But if you wanna know what wind speeds a particular panel will be able to stand up to, there is a formula that takes test pressures achieved by the panel, accounts for a safety factor, and it accounts for other variables like roof height, building location, building type, to give you those wind speeds for each zone of a roof. There are some helpful charts online that you can reference, and I'll link one in the description down below. All right, last question. What's the best underlayment for a standing seam metal roof? My first estimate included 30 pound felt paper. Okay, so 30 pound felt paper has been the product of choice for steep slope roofing for a long time, but the industry has changed over the last several decades and really moved on to synthetic underlayment, which has a longer life, stands up to UV rays better, and resists moisture better. Many of them come with warranties as well. You can also get synthetic underlayment in fully adhered versions, which we recommend to be put in your flashing zones like valleys, eaves, low slope areas under a 312, um, or depending on your location, maybe a fully adhered underlayment for the entire roofing assembly uh, might be required. We recommend shark skin high temp synthetic underlayment for metal roofing because when you're putting on a standing seam roof that's gonna last a long, long time, you're paying good money for it, you want the components that go along with that roof to last just as long. Don't forget more info about each topic covered is in the description down below. Now I wanna hear from you. Is this a format you like? Do you wanna see more? Let me know in the comments. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. You guys are the heartbeat of this channel and I appreciate each and every one of you. As always, I'm Thad Barnett and I'll catch you next time.